Hi, everybody. The study of solar energetic particles and their seed population is a work supported by the National Science Foundation. My close collaborators here are Gunesh Biden at the University of Oxford and Nathan Schwadron at the University of New Hampshire. Gunesh is an expert in machine learning, particularly simulation-based inference and surrogate models. Nathan and his colleagues developed EPRAM, the physics-based energetic particle transport model we will be using extensively in this work. Solar energetic particles, SCPs for short, are highly energetic particles coming from the sun and contributing largely to the space radiation environment. Another major source is the galactic cosmic rays, but we will not be addressing that today. First observed in the 1940s, it, SCPs consist mainly of electrons and protons traveling much faster than the particles in the background solar wind, often attaining relativistic velocities. They reach Earth at a distance of 100 million kilometers or eight light minutes away from the sun in an hour or even less. The energies vary from several KEVs, kilo electron volts, to a few GEVs, giga electron volts. And they can lead to severe to extreme space weather conditions. The figure on the right hand side is a typical profile of an SAP event observed by the ghost satellite. The particular one shown here is the observation on 10th September 2017 by GOES 13 and GOES 15. The top panel shows the integral flux above 100 MeV and the bottom panel shows the integral flux above 10 MeV. The horizontal dotted lines correspond to one PFU, particle flux unit, and the uh, on the top part panel and 10 PFU in the bottom panel. These numbers are of uh, great importance to uh, radiation hazards for space flights. There are two main sources of um, SCPs solar flares, the movie uh, on the left-hand side, and coronal mass ejections as shown in, in the movie on the right-hand side. The flare on the left-hand side uh, movie occurred on 4th September, 2017. This image was taken by 171 uh, Angstrom channel of the AIA telescope on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO. This was classified as an M5.5 class flare originating from active region 2673. And this flare caused um, moderate SAP events. The movie on the right side shows a CME passing through the inner corona taken by LASCO C2 coronagraph on the solar and heliospheric observatory SOHO. Overplotted are the profile, uh, fitted profile and uh, the shock front moving along. This CME occurred on April 21st, um, 2019. And the associated SCP events were recorded by Parker Solar Probe, which was at a distance of 0.48 AU from the sun. Here on the left hand side is uh, a movie of a, an HMI magnetogram showing active region 12738 on the west limb that gave rise to the CME in the previous slide. 
The figure in the center is an annual simulation of the solar wind in the heliosphere with a CME that uh, went past PSP, which recorded the SEP event. Here, the solar wind density is shown on the left panels and velocity on the right panels. And this is an ecliptic view. SCP events are observed and recorded by Earth, orb Earth orbiting spacecraft um, until the launch of PSP and Solar Orbiter, which go as close to the sun as 10 solar radii. In order to understand the origin and acceleration of these particles, it is necessary to establish the magnetic connectivity of the observer with the sun. In the figure on the right side, the Parker Solar Probe locations have been mapped back ballistically to the corona to a distance of 15 solar radii and then back to the photosphere along the magnetic field lines model by a coronal model. In this work, we used the country source surface model developed by Zaro and Koxema in 1995. Here the triangles represent the foot points on the corona and the circles show the corresponding foot point, photospheric foot points. The, the SCP events uh, caused by the CME shown in the previous movie can be seen to be mapped back to the foot of the active regions. Thus establishing the magnetic connectivity of the active regions with the um, observer. SCPs pose serious threats to robotic and manned missions for this, this space exploration. The scientific instruments and electronics on board a satellite. It also causes um, severe threats to passengers and crew on aircraft on a high latitude route, especially over the poles. And this can be life threatening to astronauts inside spacecraft and during extravehicular activities. They also cause communication disruptions on earth and space. SCPs in two energy ranges are particularly hazardous to space exploration. First category is energies over one MeV with proton flux exceeding 10 PFU. This is relevant to astronauts engaged in extravehicular activities in a spacesuit. The second category is energies over 100 MeV with proton flux exceeding one PFU. This is relevant to astronauts inside a spacecraft behind shielding. The figure on the left-hand side is an illustration of the space radiation on the surface of the moon and the exposure of the astronaut in space suit to this radiation environment. Shown in the insert is an SCP event during November 16 to 20 in 2018, where proton energies in excess of 1 MeV were detected by ISIS, the Integrated Science Investigation of the Sun instrument on PSB. Just as geomagnetic storms, the solar radiation storms, uh, this is another name for um, SCP events, are also categorized into five classes from S1 to S5, S1 being minor and S5, an extreme event. The table shown here depicts the various levels of the associated radiation hazards, the particle flux levels, and the frequency of occurrence during an 11 year period of solar variability known as the solar cycle. There are two ways of mitigating the space radiation hazards. One is to provide adequate shielding and the other to accurately predict when and where the SCPs events will occur. Shielding is considered as the solution to space 
radiation hazards. But in, in the case of um, high energy radiations in excess of 100 MeVs, there can be secondary particles such as neutrons and nuclear fragments produced in the shielding material itself and can uh, worsen the radiation hazard. NOAA makes proton flare predictions based on statistical methods. And there are a few other tools developed for SCP production as listed here. Our project is to develop a neural network model for SCP prediction. The largest challenge in um, developing a neural network model is that there are very few SCP events observed over the past few decades. There may be a few hundred of them. This is not sufficient to train and validate the neural network model at all. One way to circumvent circumvent this class imbalance problem is to train the neural network on synthetic or simulated data of PSP, SP, SCP events, excuse me, um, and optimize and validate using observed data. For the present work, we are using a physics-based model called EPRIM. Uh, so, which stands for Energetic Particle Radiation Environment Model, developed by Schwarzen and his colleagues in 2007. EPRAM is a kinetic transport code for solving the focused transport equation in the Lagrangian frame of reference, that is co-moving and field aligned. Given a source of particles such as SCPs or pickup ions, EPRIM can calculate the distribution function anywhere in the heliosphere. EPRIM has been validated using well-known events such as the Halloween storm and spacecraft data such as GOES and ELISIS. EPRIM is parallelized. The EPRIM grid and the focused transport equation are presented in the figure here. The spiral grid shown here is a set of nested cubes whose surface uh, is to further divided into square arrays of square cells with grid nodes at the centers. The grid nodes in 3D correspond to solar magnetic field lines and move outward with the solar wind. There is a special class of nodes, which we call the observer nodes, um, shown by the thick white and red spiral. And the arrow points to this uh, observer node here in the figure. These nodes are the ones at which the energetic particle distributions are projected at a given observer, such as Earth, Moon, and spacecraft. The shell of grids co-rotates with the sun at each time step. The displacement delta x of the nodes moving with the nested shells advancing radially outward can be obtained as a product of the solar wind velocity vx and the time step delta t as shown here. An example of the EPRIM simulation is shown here. The plot on the left-hand side is the differential SAP flux as a function of time observed at uh, PSP uh, at 0.48 AU. Shown in the right-hand side are the observed and simulated particle fluxes. The symbols represent the observed flux and the solid lines show the simulated fluxes. Green and gray represent the profiles before the event and blue and purple show the 
seen during the event. Here we determine the seed function parameters iteratively to match the observation. The iterative process is tedious, and in order to understand the optimum ranges of the parameters that are physically meaningful, we need to carry out systematic studies uh, with several runs of EPROM. For this, we adopted the technique of fast surrogates that are found to be successful in several other domains of science. This work is still in progress and the basics of the techniques we are developing are described in the next few slides. This figure shows the existing simulator, EPROM, taking in a few parameters related to the seed function. EPROM is physics-based, but it is computationally expensive. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes with reasonable grid parameters and other physical parameters. It gives out the particle fluxes as a function of space, time, and energy ranges for each one. What we want is an EPRIM surrogate neural network that can reproduce the EPRIM output with reasonable um, accuracy. For this, we are containerizing the EPRIM simulator and dependencies for generating the training data. We are also building the machine learning architecture maybe a deconvolutional neural network as shown here. In future, we may also develop a surrogate model for reproducing the optimal input parameters from the output of the simulator and inverse model. In conclusion, we are exploring the predictive capabilities of EPROM in the context of the space radiation mitigation and to develop a neural network model to, for uh, SAP predictions. For this, we are studying the seed function and, it, and its influence in SAP prediction. Since the observed SAP events are very sparse in number, we use synthetic SCP events simulated by EPROM for training the neural network. That's all. Thank you all.